Continuing 6, 7 and 8, um, I'm just showing you how I dealt with the stern um, on 6 by actually cutting a curved piece rather than trying to force the end part of strike 6 um, into, the, into the stern. To get this line here, we place a piece of paper inside. We have this jam that blocks the temporary strike that we're putting in and we put it against the one that was there before and as you can see that gives us a nice correct bend and we simply draw this out on the stock, on the paper stock and that gives us the correct bend and we cut this out and we have some wide 3 inch stock and we place the 3 inch stock and that actually gives us the bend. So we can draw this in. I don't know if you can quite see that, but that's the piece there. And leaving a piece on either end, because remember at this side, we have to cut this piece at an angle and we can rough it out. And then we have 10 and a half inches here. And we have the full 12 inches here. We mark the 10 and a half inches here and the 12 inches here and then following the same curve that we've established with the pencil on the French ruler we simply transfer it up and draw the connecting line. Then you go on your spiral sander or whatever you're going to use to, to shape it and you're going to end up with this piece. Now we can do our trial fit. And the only thing we have to be careful of is the cut here to join it up. It's not going to be at 90 degrees, it's going to be at an angle. So we make sure we get that angle correct. And so, once you take your time, remember you have to take this end down to two and a half inches. And um, really, we've got a perfect curve. It's relaxed, and all we have to do is push it down flat. I also put a little block in here um, to make sure that when we clamp it down, we don't get it out of alignment. And so it's jammed here and jammed here. Of course, when in doubt, pin with dowels. So um, I've, I've used dowels sparingly because I'm trying to save on them. Uh, but at least three to six dowels in each piece. I've temporarily beefed up this side of the boat because I found that I was, when I put the clamps on and was pressuring it in, I was actually getting it continuously breaking. And this was a simple solution to that. Simply two or three, whatever you de decide you need, um, pieces and just clamped on temporarily. And the end result is really fantastic. You can see it's actually a much nicer, cleaner curve than the than the port side. The last thing we have to remember is to clean up um, six before we install seven. Uh, seven is an inch and a half um, thicker than, than six and so it would be very difficult to do it afterwards. Also before we stick seven we should also chamfer the side because again that task will be very difficult to do on the model. The first thing I'm going to do with strike seven is to make up a very bendy flexible template um, that I can fit and adjust um, to, to, to make sure that uh, I've got everything correct. So this is the piece. This is made of the same four and a half inch stock and you can see it it fits perfectly in there and of course I can bend it around. Here we have the template put in place and you'll see it's a perfect fit. Um, we've soaked the four and a half inch piece and we'll put it in place, clamp it up just like this one 
and use the blow dryer to try and fix the shape. Failing that, we'll have to cut a, a curved piece. I actually used the blow dryer about four or five times in short bursts, probably 20-30 seconds, so I don't overheat the model. Off with the clamp. And look at that. She's holding her shape beautifully. A little spring in it. Um, in fact, when we take the back off, there's hardly any spring in it. And so we're getting a piece that is bent this way and this way. Um, so if my thing does not work out, we can actually put this piece on a flat stock and cut it cut it into shape. I've soaked the four and a half piece for about three, three and a half hours. And it seems to be taking the bend quite nicely. We have lots of my made up clamps holding it in place and some other clamps pulling it into the number six. Um, so we're going to leave that for quite a while, um, I would think, until this afternoon, and then see how, how it holds its shape. Very apprehensive as I take the pieces off, but deep down inside I just know that this is going to work. A little scarring here which I can sand off because I'm going to taper this a bit anyway, take take this down a little bit. So maybe I tighten these two a little too hard, this one here. And we're getting a nice tight fit there. And this time I feel so much better sticking it. Uh, again, I'm using the PVA. I could use anything uh, because the the piece has taken the form so very well. The um, time elapse really has made a lot to these videos because it allows me to show you the process that I've used going, through, going forward and really minimize the amount of time that we spend. And time with these videos is, is always a challenge. Again, with this one, I was trying to keep it down to 10 minutes, but it's easily going to get closer to 15 by the time it's done. I have, you'll notice that I had to reduce the end of the of the piece from ten and a half inches down to five that's to get the end of the streaks um, six seven and eight to finish where I wanted them one thing about this bill is we are constantly learning lessons so we've managed to shape the piece and what I realized is had I taken this curve before I installed it on the model um, it would make making this piece so much easier. So when I come to do straight 8, um, I'm going to have this curve already pre-cut so that half of this confusion um, is down. The other thing I find for whatever reason is it seems to be protrude, um, higher at the end than it is here. Maybe it's just an illusion. So I'm going to take this down even more than I've taken it down already. Uh, perhaps the biggest challenge is really just making sure you have a nice tight butt. Um, you've seen me using the pencil to mark these out. I can do them on the sides where the streak is going to cover over the pencil line as it's almost impossible to remove that pencil line um, once you've stuck the piece in place. But it really is a very useful guide when applying the, the glue and allows you to keep it inside and minimize the cleanup afterwards. All complete, and um, maybe it could have come hmm, and one thirty second up further. But what I'm going to do is I'll trim back number six to match it. The starboard side is now complete, and of course I can see my mistakes. I leave it for you to figure out if you see them um, in my reviews. Anyway, um, on to the port side now. 
and uh, it's just so much better having done the starboard side um, the port side was so much easier and then you may notice my um, clamps are changing um, I'll go through that um, in another video but they're evolving and getting easier to use as I, I struggle with some some of the issues of using them here's the paper template um, fitted um, that allows us to make that piece and we do it the same as we've done with the other side using the French ruler to mimic the curve so we have the same type of curve on both sides of the piece remember when fitting a piece to make sure you cut it oversize because you're going to have to reduce the width as you fit it and you're going to need some um, extra wood on the top side of it so here is a piece this is about the third fitting and you can start to see a little um, light in the center of it which says that both ends have to come down a bit but we've got the butt join fitting perfectly and the end has got the right shape uh, against this stern stenson we're just uh, sticking the last piece in and uh, my comfort level with the model now is so much better than than when I started. Experience is such a wonderful thing. I think when I build my next model, it's going to show. Although this one seems a bit higher than this one, um, if this was extended all the way in, they would actually meet exactly on this line. So I could put a little filler piece in here, in which case they would line up perfectly. Or I could just open up this gap a little bit which I have a feeling I would prefer to do when I put the last strike number 8 in. But um, again, real happy that I'm going to end up just on the top of the stems and of the back of the stems. All that was left to do was to put the remaining um, three dowels in and um, just uh, cleaned it up and yeah that's really it just wait for it to dry this brings us to the end of the middle floor head streak it's been much easier than streak six and I assume that streak eight is going to be perhaps the easiest of them all um, the only major challenge that I still have concern with is probably in the stern and the height that the floor heads come onto the stemson. Um, I'm not sure if I got that wrong. Um, it'll be interesting to hear what Greg's comments on when he has a chance to to, to see the video. Um, but I'm not unhappy and um, it doesn't impact on anything that I'm going to do above that. Um, and of course remember <laughs> all this is going to be covered because I'm the, the entire model is going to be planked so you're not going to see any of this this is really just for my gratification the other interesting thing has happened is that the whole model has really stiffened up as I expected that it would um, and that it would in the in the rail ship so I think once I put the wheel on on the outside um, the model will actually get very rigid so we we'll see you as we put the last of the um, of these strakes on and that will be the end of, of this series. So we'll see you then.